So this video was supposed to come out last week, but like a frankly frightening amount of people on this platform, I got sick last week which meant I couldn't record audio. Instead I'm going to be posting it this week, so well here you go. With the success of the first video, I'm sure all of you guys saw a second part coming, but this one is slightly more complicated than the version in New Vegas. Unique weapons in New Vegas are very clear on what they are, they are items that have a name, and they are special. Fallout 4 introduced legendary weapons, so that makes things slightly more complicated. For example, I could get the gun Righteous Authority, but technically speaking, I could find another gun with the same legendary effect, rename it to the Righteous Authority, and it is no longer a unique weapon. So for the sake of this run, I'm only going to be using weapons that are truly unique. There are a precious few of those, so this is actually going to be quite the challenge. With all that being said, let's get into the run. For my specials, I made sure to focus on strength so I could get better melee damage, as well as putting a few points in perception and endurance, that way I could boost my armor resistances. The rest of my points went to agility and luck, agility for perks like moving target and blitz, and luck so I could get the idiot savant perk. Despite the fact I could use guns this playthrough, I never put any points into the gun nut perk, which meant I was using base level mods during the entire playthrough, but honestly that didn't get in the way too much as I ended up using melee weapons for most of the run. As soon as I was out of the vault, I dropped everything in my inventory. I didn't necessarily have to do this, but I felt like it would be fitting for the run. After I was done throwing all my belongings on the floor, I made my way to Sanctuary and started scrapping everything in sight, just to give me an extra boost in levels. After I was done with that, I was ready for the real trouble of this run. I am of course talking about getting my first weapon, considering I'm going to have to get it without killing anything. Now the weapon I have in mind is the 2076 World Championship Baseball Bat. I'm only going to say that once through this entire run, so from now on I'm just going to be referring to it as the Super Slam Bat. The issue with the Super Slam Bat is that it's in Jamaica Plain, and if you guys remember in my Old World Items Only run, that is the area I actually almost quit the game. This is because in that run, I was doing that section in very hard, and it was extremely brutal. Now normally here I would say that this time at least I am not in very hard, and can actually make my way through the plains, but sadly I would be lying if I said that. As usual, I have an ego problem, and bump the difficulty back up to very hard at the start of this run. I figured it'd be easy, but clearly I wasn't thinking, because now I have to go to the area that almost made me rage quit the game while I had weapons, and make my way through it without anything. No armor, no guns, no meds. Clearly, this is the work of some sort of genius. On my way to hell, I made sure to pick up dog meat because, let's face it, I'm going to be needing man's best friend to turn into man's best chew toy in order to stop all the zombies in Jamaica. That was a very weird sentence, but I'll be moving on now. The trip there wasn't actually that bad as I didn't run into anything too powerful, and when I did, I could generally outrun them seeing as I had a high agility and endurance stat. Case in point, when I ran into the mutants at West Everett Estates, I was able to run away from them without taking any damage. Now I know what you're thinking, West Everett Estates is on the other side of the map from Jamaica Plain. What are you doing there? Well, I kind of got lost on my way there and ended up on the entirely wrong place in the map, so I ended up having to go straight through the main part of Boston in order to get there. This was a lot more brutal considering there were gunners. Lots and lots of gunners. I don't know why, but there were a lot of gunners on the route I took, and they ended up stun locking me multiple times, as well as just lasering me out of existence. There was literally nothing I could do about that, so I just had to power through. When I finally got to Jamaica Plains, I decided to run straight to the town hall, seeing as if I stood too long inside the main part of the town, all the ghouls would swarm to my position and eat me alive. Despite their whole thing being speed, I was actually able to outrun most of the ghouls and make it into the town hall. The problem here was that some of them followed me inside, and could kill me faster than I could heal. The solution to this was of course to spam drugs and run as fast as I could to the nearby rooms. In the rooms I just hid until I got the all clear before making my way to the trapped areas. Clearing out the tripwires was extremely painful considering there was a glitch that made it so that if you touched one of the turrets, they'd turn on regardless of whether you tripped a tripwire or not. There was literally no way of avoiding this, so I had a very rough time indeed and died many many times. Luckily I eventually got over my fear of dying, and was able to disarm all the tripwires. When I finally was able to claim my prize of a god-powered baseball bat, I was sadly disappointed as it immediately tripped all the defenses, and I had to deal with the stuff anyways. Not to worry, the only thing that came out to attack me was Protectrons, I was of course able to outrun them. If you've never used the World Series bat before, basically it's Bethesda's way of teasing us with what Super Slam could have looked like in this game. 
The knockdown effect is pretty good, but it doesn't proc that often. But the good news is, the only weapon that has that effect is the baseball bat, this one in particular. So that means this weapon is entirely unique, and is therefore viable for this run. Now when I say that the effect isn't that great, I'm not saying it's a bad weapon, as the baseball bat is actually a fairly good melee weapon, and ended up being one of the best weapons I got throughout the entire run. When I got the baseball bat, I figured I'd need an armor upgrade, and the best place to do that would probably be a main town like Good Neighbor. While I was making my way to Good Neighbor, I happened to walk into the DB Tech School, which happens to have a unique set of clothing in there, so I figured I might as well grab it considering I'm not wearing anything right now. The thing inside is just literally a jacket and some jeans, but it has the school's emblem on it. For some reason this is unique, so I'm able to use it during the run. Getting the jacket was surprisingly difficult, seeing as it's sitting inside a shelf in one of the areas that has a lot of raiders in it. The baseball bat makes a fairly good stealth tool, so I was able to use that to knock out some of the raiders before making my way to the locker and grabbing my pathetic winnings. There is a slightly better piece of unique armor inside the building, but it's worn by a unique raider so I don't feel like taking him out right now, especially since he has a combat rifle, so I instead just snuck my way out and made my way to Good Neighbor. Inside Good Neighbor, I immediately took off my clothes and spent 200 caps to buy McCready's instead. Once again, another set of unique armor, this time slightly better. While I was here, I decided to take the secret route of finding Nick through the memory den, since after all it is free XP. If you've never done this before, basically just go to Good Neighbor before you go to Diamond City, walk into the memory den, and talk to Irma. After that, she'll put you in one of the memory loungers, and you could rewatch the opening of the game, and then you can make your way to Diamond City. I of course did not do that, and instead went to Vault 114, so I could deal with the Triggerman. I figured I might as well get this out of the way now, that way I don't have to worry about it later. Now Vault 114 was surprisingly smooth, considering I barely have any armor, and I'm in very hard right now. Sure, the Triggerman could destroy me within seconds, but to be fair, I could do the same to them. The men in suits' downfall ended up being their predictable pathing, considering they would always funnel their way into a room with me, and if I stood by the door, I could just knock them out one by one. This worked in all the major rooms, and I was in the vault within seconds. Dino gave me about as much trouble as usual, so I freed Nick and made my way through the rest of the vault. I of course did die a few times while in here, but honestly, it was pretty normal, all things considered, so I was able to make my way out pretty quickly. When confronting Skinny, I just got a sneak critical on him before turning on his backup, and honestly, they weren't that tough. As long as I stayed within cover while they were shooting at me, I was in no danger of getting hurt, obviously, and I was actually able to take each one of them out. When outside, I just told Nick to go wait for me in Diamond City before making my way to... Let me read my notes. Give me a second. I put my phone in my pocket. The Old North Church. Sadly, I am not going to the church to murder the railroad in cold blood, but rather I have to help them for a bit of this video. Believe me, I'm not happy about this, but what am I going to do? When I arrived at the church, I got what had to be one of my favorite kills ever, as I managed to ping pong a feral ghoul around the building. Here's the clip. This made me incredibly happy at the time. It may not seem like much, but keep in mind I have the prospect of working with the railroad ahead of me, so every little bit helps. The railroad's puzzle is barely a puzzle, so I was able to make my way inside their secret base with little to no effort. Since the railroad is comprised of the little siblings of society, they immediately task me with a bunch of work that I have to go and do. I'm of course talking about tradecraft and making my way through the switchboard. Now, the switchboard was much, much harder than Vault 114, considering the synths use energy weapons, which is a whole nother beast entirely. The synths could kill me in seconds, which although could be said about the Triggermen, this time I wasn't able to kill them in seconds, however. Instead, I was stuck running from most of them. Before dealing with the toasters, I decided to participate in the Bambi Massacre of 2287, just to boost morale up a little bit. The switchboard was of course brutal, but I was able to make my way through it purely based off the moving target perk and its huge boost in damage resistances. When I finally got to the end, I accepted my reward of the Deliverer with open arms, considering it's actually a gun that I can indeed shoot, meaning I now have range. The Deliverer is obviously one of my favorite pistols in the game, and I'm very familiar with it. So familiar with it, in fact, I am fairly confident I could take out all the synths in Fort Hagen with it, and so I made my way there. Nothing really interesting happened on my way there, except me stopping at Abernathy Farm, stealing all their tomatoes, and then grand slamming their cat into orbit. 
I was a little worried about the turrets when entering Fort Hagen, seeing as me and them have had our disagreements in the past, but luckily my character just activated his Jesus mode and floated to the nearby doors. When I got inside, I proceeded to use the deliverer to take out as many synths as possible before switching to the baseball bat in order to save ammo. The fight with the big cheese was actually pretty tough considering Kellogg's backup doesn't mess around, so I had to be very careful on how I tackled the situation. The trick ended up being using a stealth boy to take out his backup before charging him with the baseball bat. Me and Kellogg then proceeded to have a completely invisible fight, which ended with me beating his brains out with the baseball bat. Despite the fact I clearly just beat his brains out, I was able to then harvest his brains to take to the memory den later. More importantly though, I was able to get a new set of clothes, which was much better than my old set. After I was done stomping on Kellogg's corpse, I decided I'd start helping the railroad again, which is something I don't like doing. The quest I just did was the one with the guy that nobody likes, and I proceeded to call him worthless seven times. After I was done with that quest, I made some questionable decisions like trying to start the Automontron DLC, which failed, and going to Quincy for some reason, which also failed. In the end of the day, after all of this, I realized something. The difficulty was too high. Seriously, the robots in the Automatron DLC were destroying me in a single hit, so I very quickly realized that maybe, just maybe, I should down the difficulty. I did, and then I went back to the Automatron DLC. If you're wondering why I'm so determined to start the DLC now, well put simply, the Automatron DLC had to squeeze in a certain amount of unique weapons in the DLC itself, and so they're all kind of piled up in one room. I want those weapons, so I'm going to be doing the DLC up until that point. The first part of the quest, after freeing Ada of course, was just to get a Robo Brain, which is easy enough, considering the Robo Brain isn't actually that tough or that well hidden. The next part of the quest is of course to get another Robo Brain, which is slightly more difficult because for some reason this one was severely overpowered. I'm not kidding, it was completely resistant to all my weapons, and I could get one shot by it. Luckily, using some shenanigans involving a super mutant suicider and the difficulty level, I was able to kill it in one shot and harvest its brain material. For some bizarre reason, Ada decided to teleport to the middle of the map during this, so I had to go find her, and when I did, I had one of the weirdest events I've ever had. First, I had a random encounter that had a bunch of raiders talking to some settlers, saying that they had to pay the toll. When I got there, they immediately opened fire on me, but they were standing on a dam, and so I was able to launch one of them off like General Oliver. I'm not kidding, I was having flashbacks from New Vegas. When I actually cleared out the last of the raiders, I went to go talk to the settlers, and for some reason they were identical. And since such abominations can't live in the same world as me, I decided to kill them so I could do everybody a favor. When I finally did track Ada down, she was literally standing in the middle of nowhere, staring at a Brahmin. Luckily, I didn't have to do anything special, and I was able to advance the quest from there. The next part was, of course, the part with all the Rust Devils, which, although the Rust Devils themselves weren't that tough, their robots were pretty difficult. The main issue was, of course, the Assaultrons, considering that, well, they could kill me pretty quickly with the spinny arm blades. I was able to take them out with the Deliverer of all things, because for some reason they don't do well when you just focus fire into their torso. On my first attempt, by some stroke of bad luck, the iBot that sits inside the cage inside the room with Ahab got loose and attacked Ahab, waking him up, making him very, very angry. If you don't know who Ahab is, he's the giant sentry bot that tries to obliterate you once you take the Robo Brain. I don't actually need to take the Robo Brain, so my plan was to avoid him. I did manage to avoid him, and thankfully, I didn't get killed so I didn't have to go through that whole section again, so I actually made it into the room with Ivy. Ivy is the leader of the Rust Devils and holds a unique Tesla rifle. That's not the reason I'm here, however, I was actually here for the unique Assaultron head that's right behind her. Like I said, all the unique weapons are in a single room. After picking up the Assaultron head, I took it for a spin in that I shot the Assaultron behind Ivy, and it one-shot it. The main problem with this is it irradiates the user after every shot, which can stack up fairly quickly, but I'm not exactly concerned, seeing as I logged two more shots at Ivy, killing her. I picked up the Tesla rifle just in case, but I never actually got too much use out of it. Finally done stalling at least for a bit, I made my way to the memory den to turn in my brain bits. The memory den is the same as always, saying as it's the memory den. The only thing different this time is that it reminded me that the railroad is still alive, which made me sad, so I went to go kill everyone at Bunker Hill in order to cheer me up. While I was at Bunker Hill, I learned that my armor is glitched and in fact not working, seeing as the people with pipe pistols wiped me out within seconds. When I took off my armor, the glitch stopped, but when I put it back on, it started up again. Oh well, fashion over function, so I kinda just went with it and kept Kellogg's armor on. 
The fix to this glitch ended up being just dropping the armor, but I didn't learn that till way later in the run, so I ended up going on without armor for a little while. I decided while I was in Bunker Hill I might as well help the Cabots, as I had some free time and, let's face it, Lorenzo's artifact gun is pretty good and would make a nice addition to my arsenal. I've mentioned this quest a thousand times, you guys all know how it goes, I go in, I kill some raiders, this time I gassed Lorenzo, Jack Cabot gave me a fancy new gun, and I'm happy. So happy I decided to make my way to Diamond City and kill every killable NPC in the area. I'm not exactly sure why I did this as it just stood to be a drain on my resources, but I had a lot of fun doing it and even though my armor was bugged I was actually able to pull it off. After I was done committing unspeakable crimes, I made my way to the Glowing Sea so that I could get sent to the great green building that's green tech. The Glowing Sea wasn't actually that interesting, I didn't come across anything that special besides the fact that I figured out how to fix my armor while I was here. Before I made my way into green tech, I decided to stop back at Diamond City to see if Dr. Sun had forgiven me yet, which surprisingly he had so I was able to use him to cure my radiation. Green tech could have been a problem considering the gunners are pretty well armed and they gave me hell earlier in this run, but this time I'm a bit better off as well as the fact I have Lorenzo's artifact gun. Originally I wasn't using it as I was planning on saving it for mass fusion, but I ended up starting to use it halfway through the building because I figured it might help a little. That was an understatement, it helped a lot. The Gamma Gun obviously being a Gamma Gun ripped through the human opponents, but the thing about Lorenzo's gun is it tends to break limbs as well, so even if they survived the initial shot, most likely they'd be limping so I could just take them down with a second. The gun wasn't so great against the Corsair, and on my first attempt I died when I tried to use it, but it's okay I was able to use the Assaultron head to take it down anyways. The Baseball Bat might have been a good alternative, but the problem was I hadn't figured out how to spam shots with it, meaning that the Corsair could probably stun me before I could attack him. Either way, the Assaultron head made a nice substitute, and I had another brain chip before long. Staying true to their reputation of being the worst faction in the game, the Railroad took forever to decode the chip, and then didn't give me any resources to build the relay. Fun. Luckily I've done enough side quests where I actually do have the amount of resources I need to build it, so I just built it at Sanctuary and waited for them to fast travel to me. When they did, I hopped into the relay, teleported to the Institute, and pledged my allegiance to Sean. I'm going to be siding with the Institute this time around, just because I figured it would be somewhat overpowered by this point. I was wrong in assuming that, but I'm still going to go through with it, mind you. The Institute's first quest is just the meet and greet, which is something I could get over in about 2 minutes, which I did, and after that I have Synth Retention. The only hard part about Synth Retention was the Brotherhood Patrol that's scheduled to show up while you're doing this quest, because they gave me quite a bit of trouble. Before I talk about them though, I want to talk about the Sky Brahmin I found inside a house. It's a Sky Brahmin inside of a house. Anyways, back to the Brotherhood. They were a headache as expected and they kept attacking X9 which made my job extremely hard. Also, this time they came with a dog which made me sad as they never have dogs when I'm there. Eventually, they finally decided that I was the real target and instead of, well, engaging me in combat, they just crashed the bird, or bird into my back, instantly killing me. After reloading and trying again, I just shot down the bird, or bird this time it didn't land on my back, and I was able to proceed through the quest as normal. By now I would be concerned if I couldn't kill raiders, so Libertalia was pretty easy, the only threat being the raider with the fat man. Luckily I was smart enough to save a crit, so as soon as I saw him in his chair, I used a critical shot with the Assaultron head, which instantly killed him. It may have been a bit overkill, but I'm okay with that, considering I now don't have to worry about getting my knees blown off while I'm walking around the base. When I got to the final room, I tried to kill Gabriel without using the code, but sadly as I learned in my Kill Everyone run, you can't, so instead I just left him to get eaten by X9. I'm pretty sure that's what happens. When I got back to the Institute, Sean was pleased with my kidnapper and training work. In fact, he was so pleased that he sent me to war. Now, I've already established that Bunker Hill is my territory and no one's allowed in it, so everyone who set foot in that area died. No knight, synth, or heavy got out of that area just because I was feeling grumpy that they were in my space. The real trouble here was of course the turrets, as well, for some reason they were hostile to me, even though nothing else was. I have long since conquered my fears of turrets, so I was able to take them out pretty easily. To be fair to them, they could say the same. Now the Brotherhood Knights could have been a threat, but I have learned a new tactic whereas if I shuffle between third person and first person with the baseball bat, I could actually swing faster than normal, allowing me to stun lock them. 
it's pretty difficult and if you mess up the timing you could get hurt pretty badly but it's actually worth it and worst case scenario if i did mess up the timing i could use vats to save myself so basically i was able to stun lock all of the brotherhood members i leveled up a few times here and by the way i'm just spending all my levels on perception as i plan to have the penetrator perk by the time i get to the final fight because that turns the final fight with the brotherhood into a fireworks show either way the current fight with the brotherhood was going well for me so I went to the room and beat the crap out of all the synths inside. Yes, I didn't recall them. Like I said, everyone in the area has to die. Now that everyone involved was questioning what I was doing and what were my motives, I returned to the Institute to be crowned new Grand Master. My first act with this title is to announce the new Gorilla Games, where we're going to feed one scientist from each division to the gorillas inside that one room. The first one didn't go so well. The gorillas didn't eat the people. This annoyed me to no end, so I ended up going there myself and pretending I was the gorilla and beat every scientist in there with my favorite stick. These actions got my title of Grandmaster revoked, and sadly now I'm back to doing grunt work. My next task was of course mass fusion, which thankfully I had saved enough ammo with the gamma gun, which really really came in clutch. I was struggling on the first couple floors, mainly because I was planning on saving the gamma gun rounds, so I did struggle a bit. This was mostly due to one knight who for some reason had a really good weapon. The trick to killing him ended up being using the super slam effect on the baseball bat and just hoping that it would proc while I was fighting him, launching him off the building. This didn't kill him, but out of sight, out of mind. The world's most dangerous elevator ride could have been a problem, and it was, but thankfully I had enough healing to make it through, letting me get to the bottom floor where I could actually deal some damage. This is where the gamma gun really came in clutch, as once again, the human enemies can't really fight back against it, so I was able to blast my way through every Brotherhood member in front of me. When I got down to the final room with the reactor in it, I just chugged a bunch of Radix that was in my inventory and ran in as fast as I could, spamming it right away as I did. When it came down to the fight with the Sentry Bot and the Assaultrons, I actually wasn't that worried because, as I just said, I just took a bunch of Radix, meaning I could reliably use the Assaultron head without cooking myself from the inside. The assault run head is more than enough to put down the three robots, so the fight was over before it really had a chance to start. While I was in here, I leveled up one more time, getting me the penetrator perk, and here's the reason why it's so important. It allows me to shoot through power armor, letting me hit someone's fusion core, even if they're not facing away from me. This means I could effectively remove each knight from their armor, making the final fight with the Brotherhood a bit of a joke. Now it's time for the part of the run we've all been waiting for. Pinned. The quest where you get to kidnap the scientist T.S. Wallace for the Institute. No, I'm of course talking about killing the railroad, but before I could do that, the Institute dangles that quest in front of you like some sort of treat and makes you do a bunch of mundane tasks for it. These tasks range from reading out the speech to messing around with some wires inside Diamond City, nothing too interesting. The only noteworthy thing that happened during the section was that I killed Travis while I was in Diamond City, mainly because I forgot to kill him earlier. Thankfully, I finally managed to finish all this busy work. I was given the best gift of all, the gift of doing my favorite task of killing the railroad. Nothing too much to say about this section, I just really enjoy killing the railroad, and it's something I really wish I got to do earlier in the run. At least I could be happy knowing that I now have a unique dialogue waiting for me back in the Institute, where I get to tell Liam, the railroad's man on the inside, that I murdered all of his friends and I'm now going to murder him. Okay, now it's time for the final fight, and as I'm sure many of you saw coming, it was a mess. On my first attempt, I tried to just rush the Brotherhood straight out of the gate, and let's just say that was my personal worst idea, since that one time I thought it would be okay to take a couple sips out of a Frappuccino without taking any insulin. On my second attempt, I did the exact same thing, this time with drugs. Also didn't work. On my third attempt, I decided, okay, maybe I should try a more stealthy approach, and use a stealth boy to get past the initial guards. This worked, but it could only work for so long, and before long I was spotted and killed again. On my fifth attempt, I used a stealth boy to hide past the guards, and then make my way all the way to the back so I could get to the first generator and hopefully take it out. Thankfully, this worked, and I was able to take down the generator and bring some synths in as reinforcements. Now, this was tough. I'm not gonna lie, this was really, really tough. I could handle the Brotherhood with miniguns, I could handle the Brotherhood with missile launchers, I could not handle the Brotherhood with Gatling lasers. The sheer DPS of those things would destroy me in seconds, so I just had to hope I could take them down before they took me down. The real MVP of this run was Overdrive, which basically gives you a 25% chance to crit outside of Vats, which is absolutely perfect when mixed with the Deliverer. 
This let me reliably take down even the tankiest of Brotherhood members. When it came to the second phase of the fight where you have to wait for the synth to hack, I was initially pretty worried when I accidentally blew up Proctor Ingram on top of Liberty Prime, which I thought would just instantly kill the synth virus. Luckily it didn't because the fusion core ended up falling off the building and onto some random Brotherhood members, so that was a plus for me. The rest of the fight was pretty tough, but luckily I had enough drugs to make it through, and it came down to the final vertebrates. I was able to take most of them down except for one which was able to drop off, I think it was Paladin Dance, but I took him out pretty quickly seeing as he's not much stronger than any of the other Paladins. You're probably wondering about Elder Maxon, which once again he just ended up crashing into my back simply because he rides a vertebrate like everybody else and so like everybody else he was shot straight out of the sky. After the virus was done uploading, I was teleported out of there, I got to watch the Pridwin blow up, and I returned to the Institute to do one last Grand Slam on Sean. This finished the game, proving yes, you can beat Fallout 4 using only unique weapons. That was honestly a lot more challenging than I thought it would be, mainly because of the whole very hard and armored glitch scenario. I got asked a lot on the original version of this challenge on New Vegas, why I even bother doing this challenge, considering yes, it is very possible. Well, briefly touching on that, pretty much every challenge is possible in the Fallout games just because you can beat these games as a pacifist, so you can complete most challenges no matter what. The main reason I do these kinds of challenges is because of, well, what happens in between, the little interactions and stuff like that, and that's the main thing I find fun and entertaining. So to answer why I even bother doing this challenge even though yes it's very obvious that it is in fact possible, well that's why. One last thing I'd like to mention before I end off today's video, I'm sorry if I was a little out of whack when it came to the first couple clips, I kinda lost my sort of groove when it came to recording these things after I got sick simply because A, I'm not feeling my best right now, and B, it's been a while since I've recorded any kind of audio, and I kinda lost on what kind of tone and pitch to keep. It's fine, I ended up finding my place again and I ran green tech during this video, I just wanted to briefly touch on that. I just wanted to mention that real quick. Regardless, that's all I have for today's video. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing, otherwise I'll catch you in the next one.